Hi guys, as I told you guys this season, I'm introducing you guys to the soft side of me because this is my soft girl, softer girl era because I'm already a soft girl. I'm a queen. Uh, but you guys know that, as we said, we can't be rat -ta 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 all the time, even if we love to rat -ta -ta on the blog, but uh, on our podcast rather. I mean, I miss my vlogging days. I actually just said vlog. <laughs> Steve Chips is in the building with me. I'm such a huge fan. Aww. You know what? You're one of those people who... I can be scrolling through people's content and then when I see yours, I know it's going to be gold. Aww, like, I literally you, watch you, it. It's so you. funny. From Madame Gold, <laughs> my favorite character right now is Jumoke. Hmm. Jumoke needs she's, help. She's, she's she need, I need Jumoke as a guest on my podcast. When am I going to get Jumoke? When you're because ready. Because <laughs> I want to ask Jumoke why Questions. she has to deal with all the shit she does. Lagos. <laughs> <laughs> It's Lagos, it's Lagos, it's Lagos. I think I just do, I, I, with Jumoke, I do it based on stories I hear, things I see, and it's just like, okay, let's just pick one character, that person that faces through all And then things. she's always quick to order Ubers. It's like her Uber driver and her in a relationship. I mean, but that's me as a person. So I, <laughs> as Steven, if anything is going on and it's not going the way I think it's supposed to go, I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. I, I just know. go away. Do you so. know the other day I was saying to someone that I feel like I put, protected my peace so much that I'm in bed by 10 p.m. Like, I'm just like, I don't like drama. Like, See. anything that has to do with, like, mm -mm. drama, craziness. See, um, soft, softer girl era. Softer. Yeah. It's a softer boy era. It's necessary. <laughs> because all these people be trying to take you out of your character. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Hmm, nah, nah, we Lagos. I think I've, I've mastered the idea of, you know what? That's what you're doing? Okay, cool. I'm leaving. Thank do you, you like, very much. Do you, are you one of those, would you like, do you believe in, like, having conversations before you bounce? I, I have conversations after because I feel like I react I react terribly to when we're having conversations in the moment. So I would rather just leave and then we can talk after. What's then... the worst thing that will take you out of character? Like, what's the one thing that you know you you're like? Don't try Jesus, don't try me. Like, I'm very very big on tone. I feel like mm. there's a way like no matter how angry you are with someone or there's a way you want to pass a communication or yeah, information or something. There's a way you would say that won't come out so bad so if that tone just gets to that point where i'm like nope not that tone with me mm. i'm just like i'm leaving you order your uber i'm done <laughs> oh, you get in, my, in my time now i'll just drive yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i'll leave respectfully though i'll tell you can we just do this another time it's just not working now yeah and i'll leave i'm trying to think about times when i've had to like order uber or leave i think for me it's like i do that thing where if i'm going on a date with someone and i'm not really sure i tell my friends like listen 30 minutes into it you know just call, call me if i pick up first string start saying emergency like if i pick up like maybe third if i don't pick up at yeah. all they know that it's going okay it's going but okay. if it's like second ring i'm like hey just be like somebody that your cat's cousin <laughs> father something something died no. and i'm just be like you know but have i ever left someone at a restaurant before Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. I mean, I think I, I, I have. With me, I'll see it through. If it's a date, I'll see it through. Eh. Yeah, I'll just see it through. Just so that I don't seem rude. No, with a date, I would see it through. I'm not Jumoke. I'm <laughs> 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 Steven. No, with a date, I'll see it through. And then I'll probably just not call you again. Or we'll notice I'm serious again. No, there's it. some kind of dates that see. I, I'm not sure I can I mean, see it through. From your perspective, it's like you might not see it through. Yeah, you know, like, just... it, like the worst thing for me is if you take me out on a date and I totally detest you talking down at waiters. At waiters. If I see your tone. Mm. See that tone thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I can be like, hey. yeah. What is this? <laughs> sure. I, exactly. I think I find that offensive as well. It's just like, because they are waiters, you feel like you can just talk to them anyhow. Yeah. And if I just see like first time, I might ignore it. Second time, I'm like, okay. I know I'm not coming back here again, but let's just finish eating. Let's finish. And, and you know, I think that Lagos is also like full of all sorts of crazy. Crazy. And we are crazy in Lagos. Yes. Lagos. <laughs> Please. I feel like Lagos has taught me how to be Steven now. <laughs> what does that mean? Because I went to Unilag. I've, I'm a Lagos boy all through and through. Okay. I've lived all my life in Lagos. Okay. And then going to Unilag really just formed me because the Steven I, I was in... Too. Oh, I know that because, I mean, I know you. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, like, so I went to Unilag. But was, I, was I in school when you were in school? No, I don't think so. Oh my God, am I that much older than you? I don't, I don't know. Maybe I went oh to school late. <laughs> no! Someone said to me last week that when you say like, 20 years ago, I automatically think like 98 or something, but 20 years ago was literally just... It's, it's not so far. It's, it's not, not so far, far again. No, but I'm, I mean, I'm not that young as well. Are you a Gen Z or millennial? No, I'm a millennial. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I Gen feel Z. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Millennials, millennials yeah. are like the coolest people. But I'm like, oh, so I also relate to Gen Z because I mean, I understand them. I, I understand everybody. So like going to Unilag for mm. me was like, 
what is this? What's going on here? Me, I, I was always a very, I'm an only son. So it's like, everyone is pampering me. Doing, I went to Unilag and I saw life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I formed this Stephen that I am now. So I'm very thankful to that school because mm. if not, Lagos will use me to do any of What do you think is the hardest lesson you've had to learn so far? Mm. It's the idea of being a man, honestly, because yeah. I had to start taking, when I, when I started to uni, I had to start doing things on my own and just being a man and being responsible for yourself was mm. very important for me to learn on my own. Mm. Even though I went to boarding school still, my mother was always coming to, she was like the most popular parent. Mm. Every, she was always coming every re- weekend or something. So I never really did not see her until uni lag. Like, yeah. And then I lost my father at an early age. So I didn't understand that, how to be a man early until mm. I went to school and I learned it properly. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Just living on your own and people trying to bully me and stuff. Because I was very, if you think I'm big now, hey, my year one is cool. Really? Ah. You're on the big side? I was so big. <laughs> it was scary. Like, and people used to bully you. I've been walking on the road, they'll be saying, ah, see, move your mom, move your mom. You're not going to move. I said, hey, Jesus. I have in the University of Lagos. In the University of Lagos. I stopped working. I started taking cabs. <laughs> anybody that knows me, <laughs> anybody that knows me that went to creative, I will know that. I was always taking all those drops in school because mm. I couldn't. But after like second year, I got used to it. I was like, ah, people cannot tell me anything. I'm going to start forming one kind of work now. It has gone for my body now. But back then, I used to bounce. Mm. So that shit I, that just formed me. I, Lagos is, is, it formed me to be, I'm yeah, happy for the experiences yeah. I passed through. Sure, so. I'm trying to remember if I was bullied hmm. in school. I mean, maybe not university, but even, mm-hmm. I know that what is weird that I find is that I have no, memory of my secondary school life. Ah. I actually don't. I don't have any friends from secondary school. It's so weird. No, I think they, I do. They I had this group, group thing that they tried to invite me to and I just couldn't relate and I, I don't have any memory. From I mean, I wouldn't school. go for any reunion. But no, I, I think the only memory I had from secondary school, shout out to Auntie Ify, if you ever watch this, I had this teacher who literally like, I was talking to someone recently and this is the first time that I've painted my nails this bright ever in my life because Antifi always wore red nails and red lips and she was mm. very wicked. <laughs> <laughs> that very wicked. That means she was wicked. She, was, she gave mm. me trauma. I would just remember Antifi and she had this Igbo accent. So she'd say, Toke Makinwa is a very stubborn girl. Monday, Toke Makinwa. Tuesday, Toke Makinwa. Wednesday. She traumatized me so though? much. I probably was. You know what I mean? I probably was a mm-hmm. thorn in her flesh as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, shout out to Aunt Ify. Tokema Kimwa did not end up badly. She got a podcast now. Bro. <laughs> at all, she didn't end up any way bad. Any, <laughs> anyway close to that at all. No, No, but then memories, I, do, I think that's the only memory that I actually have from secondary school. I don't remember friends. I don't have any friends from secondary that's school. Crazy. I actually do remember my friends from secondary school. I also think that those were the years where I suffered a lot of anxiety right. and... So I lost my parents at a very young age. Mm. Both my parents died when I was eight. I was adopted. And I feel like the way tragedy happened for me, I wasn't introduced to tragedy. It grew with me. Do you know what I mean? So losing a a parent at eight, Mm -hmm. I was adopted. Nobody talked about it because they were also grieving. So my mom lost her Mm -hmm. sister. So it was like a sad thing that we just never discussed. So I guess grief started showing up in different places. I stopped applying myself in school. Instead of reading, I would be climbing mango trees and chilling in the trees and dreaming and all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, I was that girl. And so maybe that's why I don't remember my secondary, yes, secondary school life. Because I hated people pitying me. Hmm. I hated the fact that when they hear your story, they almost feel like they're... True, actually, same. So I hate it. Mm-hmm. So I just didn't make friends. I also felt like anybody I got close to would die. So I was just like, you know, well, let me just no. not make any friends. That's how... That's <laughs> no. the trauma for me so I don't remember anybody from my pre- from my secondary school that's crazy because I, I do I remember people and my father was so like I lost my father in secondary school but I think I, I tried to get yeah. married but so Unilag like days was cool though it was cool I, I was... enjoyed Unilag so much like I think I, I went to Unilag like, when Unilag like, was still fun I'm sure you went to Unilag like, when Unilag like, was fun yeah. as well Unilag like, now is not it's yeah. not what it used to be it's just like <laughs> in our days then I was advised to be drunk because I wasn't reading my books I was I had I formed a girl club the first female girl club in like Are you serious? Marcel, boy. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the and I parted my entire life away. One no. day I just go to the board and saw advice to withdraw. And I think it dawned on me that all oh, the people that I was partying with, maybe they had businesses, their family was going uh, to give them the, or said, What am I gonna do? Mm-mm. And then one lecturer, Dr. Adejun, shout out to you if you ever watched this. He, Is that how you remember their names for me? I do. <laughs> I do remember 
all the lect- all the teachers that have impacted my life. You do you remember? Five when I was a kid, mm. Mr. Mensa was my math, my first math teacher. He was Ghanaian. He was very brilliant, very dark skinned, and he really I struggled with math all my I didn't like math. So Same. Mr. Mensa was like there it. for that. Um and Tifi was the first weekend <laughs> teacher I ever encountered. But I well, wonder you where she's remember. At today. My first crush though, Steve, hmm. was my literature teacher. Hmm. I used to unbutton my shirt <laughs> in secondary school. This was in secondary school, yeah. Secondary school. And he never, I don't think he ever picked up on it. Maybe he did and he just ignored he me. He just ignored you. <laughs> I said no. But I'm sure, I'm, so I think we all were all there at one point where we liked a teacher or something. But... Who was your first crush? Uh, did you ever have a crush on any teacher that taught you? No. Really? Well, I, I, I remember my first crush, but I don't want to say the name, but yeah. <laughs> I can say my name and you can't say yours. Let's just go. We're just going to move on. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember my first crush so bad. But, I just but kinda... did, did the person know you had a crush on them? Eventually. Did you tell them? No. I was just too much for the person. <laughs> too much? As the person wasn't like... Yeah, the person was like, what, what is it? What is it? Leave me now. Really? I was always with this person. Like, everybody person wanted to go to. I was there. I'm like, ah. I think at, at one point I grew older, I knew that, yes, I was being... Crushes are so dumb, aren't they? Well, I still have crushes on a few people now. Really? But at this, this time, I'm older, so I'm not going to pursue it. I'm not going to be with you. So I just, yeah. I just like you from far. Like I mean, the... I had a crush on you. You did? I did. Really? <laughs> I oh, did. Wow. But it was more like, oh. Kill me on this podcast. <laughs> no, I did, I did, I genuinely did. So think, what what did what killed the crush? Um getting to know me. Maybe getting to know yeah. me. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And just like knowing, yeah. Really? I, I think the first time that you even I met you or something, it's very, very easy for people to say, you know, the first time I met you, I thought, me too. I thought maybe you would not talk to me back up. Really? <laughs> I, I think I shouted your name yeah, when I met you because I'm like, a fan. Because you're trying to I was come like, closer. Oh my god, I know him. Because I watch your I tell you. I don't like I like skits, like but I I watch because I like mm-hmm. the brilliance that goes into your creativity. It's literally like movies. I need to hear the Madame I'm Gold I'm series is like no, don't stop. Are you crazy? I'm bored. I'm sorry. Don't do that. But I'm trying to do other things. I mean, I've been here like for a what? long time. Listen, Madame Gold needs her own movie. What you need to be thinking about is the OTTs. So maybe I need to do Amazon, <laughs> Netflix, giving you their own sitcom where we have a 11 episode ep- um, sitcom of Madame Gold. Amen. That would be amazing. Just because be I love I love that character. She makes oh, me laugh all the thank time. You, thank I never you. know what she's up to. I, I, would, I would never forget to tell you how far back I fuck with your shit. I remember one character where her niece was being beaten by a guy. Yeah. And she called her auntie and she stormed up there. I watched that. Then the one with, there's this lady who is a Jennifer. Agree, I yes. absolutely, because I'm, I'm a huge fan of her. I watched her growing up as well. So just seeing yeah. her in character was so nice. Being back in Tola, amazing. <laughs> so I watch your shit. I think you shouldn't stop. Well, I'm it's just trying amazing. to diversify. Do I do Which is things. great. But then yeah. sometimes, you see, if it's not broken, don't fix it, honey. Okay, you still pay me now, Sha. So I'm, I'm still there. Exactly. <laughs> Jumoke, Jumoke is also someone that I think that you need to literally like. Jumoke needs, needs. therapy. <laughs> Jumoke needs, because Jumoke has been through so I mean, like, much. Are, she has, she has. But do you think there's anybody like, if there's anybody in this life that's like Jumoke? I'm sure there are people that go through. That have gone through when all I watched, those issues. I can, the, the last time she met a guy and the guy told her he was bi, Jumoke almost died. She literally was like. that particular video, they dragged me for it. Eh. <laughs> On TikTok. They even took the video down. I'm like, what's going on? Why? They said I was, you know, I was against um, the the sexuality. Community. And I'm like, have you met me? I'm not going to be against anything. I'm literally <laughs> yeah. the most neutral person in this life. Yeah. But people don't realize that that is actually an issue that people... I try to pick issues that I feel like is happening yeah. in real because life. It, yeah, it, it is, is there happening are many people. You know, I was saying to someone the other day that as long as we keep living in this hypocritical society mm-hmm. where we're not letting people be themselves, we will continue to bear the brunt of their True. actions. It's so happening. You find a lot of people who are not out of the closet yet mm-hmm. and they force themselves... I, oh, I am a huge... I have huge respect, love for a lot of people who had the boldness to live their truth. I'm big on it. I love Hmm. like people who are authentic (laughs) about who they are. It's a thing. You know what I mean? I I but I respect it because Mm -hmm. I know how hard it is in this country Mm -hmm. for you to face family, church, Mm -hmm. social gatherings, 
and then friends <laughs> as well. Yeah. So a lot of people have to suppress so much and then you find them living double lives. And who is hurting here? The people <laughs> who are fighting you. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, when I watched that, I wasn't offended. I thought, it's real. It's real. There are people who, mm-hmm. you know, are gender fluid and, you know, there are people exactly. who are bisexual. Mm-hmm. There are people who, mm-hmm. you know, even the dating scene is crazy. Sometimes you're crying over a, a guy and he's, the love of his life is not an Eve, it's a Steve. <laughs> Imagine you being heartbroken <laughs> over someone who That's doesn't so even... Funny, he's not see. buying what's, what, what you're selling. You know what I, I mean? Know. So he can't walk. I'd rather you tell me that, oh boy, <laughs> you know? That, thank God that there's someone like you that has that kind of mentality. Yeah. Twitter, they were like, but that doesn't mean you're, that... You're insulting the community, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't know. That's not what you're talking about. Yeah. TikTok even took down the video. So I think people reported it a lot. So wow. Like, so I these guess... days I'm very I'm trading carefully with what I'm mm. picking. Mm. I went to something recently too. I'm sure people were going to be angry with that one. So I didn't what even post it on TikTok. There's something again about how a, a couple got dated a girl only to ask her to be a surrogate. And that story is something that someone told me. Really? Oh God, it happened. Like, it's not from I I just formed it from They were head. dating... Like, both, the, the guy dated the guy a girl the, mm-hmm. only to ask her to be a surrogate for him and his partner. So she thought she had found the love of her yes. life. Yes. <laughs> and they <laughs> offered her money. I'm not joking. This thing happened in real life. Like, the girl just said, I'm like, ah, uh-uh. ah. Did she take the money though? No, I'll didn't. take his money and I won't get pregnant. Well, I mean, uh, that's, they, that's they won't pay you unless you get pregnant. No. I'll lie. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, I'm pregnant. I'm fine. I'm going to find a pregnant one. I'll talk pregnant. Please pee on this thing. I'll give you 10% of this. Because how dare you waste my emotions? Waste your time. Why don't you just tell me from the beginning that, dude, me and my wife are I'm, going to do this? Th- that's it too. Just tell me right from the beginning. I just want to surrogate. But they didn't, they didn't. That's they didn't the thing that, that also. It's painful. What have we talked about? The, the hypocrisy that is. In the world, in the world right today. now, it's There was also another person that I saw a skit where this guy did uh, how until we continue to until we face these things every weekend there would be yes, people I, who are yeah I think it's Kenzie my friend yeah he about, said was they'll, he they'll dragged no he was, I mean he wasn't dragged I don't think he was dragged I don't think he was dragged because I, I, mean, I yeah. saw a lot of people shared that shared and that, people yeah. found it very educative do you know what I mean mm-hmm. were, I had people I had at least six people send it to me by DM to say word like. This is true, true. Because unless you're, when you're single now, mm-hmm. you're up against so much. As a single girl or guy in Lagos, mm-hmm. you're up against finding someone who thinks like you, mm-hmm. finding somebody who is off the, because I believe in dating your wage and dating Yes, just so true. that you people you can't no... you can't be looking at red and the person's looking at blue and then in, down the line you're not complaining that we're not seeing eye to eye from the beginning eye. it was never there we were never it was never there eye. so I believe <laughs> yeah. in being on the same page mm-hmm. I believe in thinking because if you're someone who believes in going for summer four times in a year and the guy does not even believe in mm-hmm. going you guys will have problems mm-hmm. then you have to also deal with the fact that everybody wants to date in a certain pool I agree. and that pool is this small. Very small. You know what I mean? Successful, mm-hmm. um, kind, has his shit together, God knows what he wants, straight, straight, because it's a thing. It's a thing. You know what I mean? It is. <laughs> it is a thing. It's a thing. I'm at the point where I feel like, but I think Nigeria is getting better though. Lagos, Lagos is getting, is getting better. better. Okay, yes, let's see Sometimes we have a disconnect because we live we here. Live in Lagos. Do you know true. what I mean? Lagos is getting better, but there are places outside of Lagos that they don't even mm-hmm. they jail. You know how they say it's 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 mm-hmm. against the it's law. Like, and you, how do you jail someone for that? I don't get it. I'll never understand. Do you know it, what I mean? I'll but never understand it. <laughs> it's a law. It's a thing. It's a thing. Lagos is liberal. I think Nigeria is even liberal. Isn't not Uganda that they say that if you they catch you, you're dying streets. Yeah. Yes, no. There's a, there's, a, there's a thing in Uganda that like, they catch you. They, I think I even read something today where they said like World Bank has withdrawn support from them or something. Because there's a, there's a thing where if you, if you, it's either they catch you in the actual dying street or if you promote the act, you're getting 20 years in jail. So that means I mean, all you skit makers cannot go to Uganda. Ah, we cannot do. Because they're all dressed like women <laughs> or that they would jail you all behind. Well, no, but another thing that I don't like though is how if you're wearing, uh, if, if you're wearing, if you're, for what, what, what I do now, it immediately feels like I'm a certain thing. Have I told you anything? Did I tell you that that was anything? It's like, I meet people outside that also woke up to me and be like, you now, you, you. This is your bum bum. This is I'm not going to use and do something. I'm what, like, guys? What? Yeah, guys. And I'm like, what's happening here? Is it the man? <laughs> Yo, at least they're hitting on you. I was at least like, the gender no, wants you. No, but I'm not dressed as what I'm going now. <laughs> Leave me. I'm not dressed. I say I've at heard least so somebody much somebody wants you. <laughs> No, I mean I don't want that kind of words. Please no. Why? I didn't tell you nothing. Don't I... come to me and say anything like that. No, I, I Have feel I like... ever been picked up by someone of my of my sex? Yeah, I I thought I was a bad I mean, bitch. Yeah. I I was like 
Girl, I'm strictly dickly, but you know what, honey? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I felt really good at the fact hmm. that even in that community, I'll be a bad bitch. You'll be a bad bitch. Uh, uh, I don't know, no. Because I feel like the ones, I feel like Nigerian men are just very derogatory. So according to them, anybody that just wearing any woman clothes, they do like it. Or they do like something. It's just like, I mean, people, there are people that are just too funny. I think that's one of the reasons people why he changed. Yeah. His, his memory. Because, you know, he got married. And yeah. All. For the longest time, even before I got into the industry, I had to put really saying things about him. And I'm like, I don't see nothing. I'm just seeing yeah. his own acts. Who's and funny. Who's yeah. funny. And he's, yeah. I mean, people, why don't they go and say things to people like all these other girls? Are and girls wear men. Where, yeah. And nobody's ever telling them anything too. like that. Like, never. Yeah. So it's like, why? Why is it even a thing? I can just enjoy the comedy and just go. Yeah, but I also think it's also the, where we are because if this was like maybe yeah, yeah, yeah the, Western world, country, I don't think yeah. they care so much about you know. I'm just thinking Dr. My... Jekyll. <laughs> we grew up with a lot of like you know people mm-hmm. who you know Tyler Perry, for instance, but there. It's so funny. I know. I'm never gonna say it. people like people yeah. like people like Tyler Perry so much. Yeah, and I like him too. But whenever people really say you be the Tyler Perry of, I'm just like, mm-hmm. you want to be the the Steve of Africa. I want to be yeah. Steve. Yeah, I think he had, like... he had his era. He did this thing in his time. I mean, but he's quite inspiring. Though. He is. But what did he do? Just Madia? No, Madia alone. I mean, like, okay, yeah, for that character, I see what you mean. But <laughs> yeah. why I'm inspired by Tyler Perry is what he's doing for the black community. That you know, I would always to him. BT and the rest of like, yeah. you know, that's like. I still just follow him just to see his successes. I'm just very yeah, inspired. His, his yeah, his success is very, very, very inspiring. inspiring. But and... aside that, I want to be Stephen of Stephen. Yeah. Of Nigeria. Yeah. Let and, me be the I mean, one that brings the. I'm not even going to lie. Instagram also sort of like promotes a lot of skit makers and people mm-hmm. more now because that's what people need True. I know I see a lot of funny videos online yeah. and I imagine what my some my day can be a lot and having to now be dealing with seriousness 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 all the time I beg make me laugh I mean, for the longest time I was just on Instagram from like 2018 to like I started moving to YouTube maybe like 2021 and really? I'm grateful that I did move to YouTube yeah. because the numbers I started, there <laughs> The numbers there are quite... It is. And you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to put out content that you put so much time into and not getting anything from it. Because I think Instagram is not paying anybody here. So I mean, it's, it's painful when you're putting in so much work and you're not seeing the returns. But YouTube and Facebook now, you're putting out content and you're getting the returns. So you're happy. You do it more. You you continuously do it. It's mm. on like... Back in the day, I got tired every time. Like I tried like maybe one month and I won't put out content again. In 2020, I was depressed. I was like, hey... This corona period, I, I think that's when I even really put on a lot of weight because mm. I was home for like six months. My mother was really scared of COVID, so we didn't go anywhere. And then you put our content on Instagram, and you're not getting anything. Mm. So in 2020, I was like, you know what? I'm not putting things on Instagram again. I'm, I'm very happy I took that decision because well, YouTube started paying. So at, least, yeah. at least, you know, COVID brought something. Well, so people like you that inspired us now, YouTube. Thank you. I mean, when people say that, I yeah. No, I, you I, yeah, YouTube OG now. It's not. Yeah. It's not. It's this too. Actually, yeah. oh we my god, I started. And, yeah. I started just recording myself. I, I remember those like fun videos. Just yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those were like the yeah. days. Oh, oh yeah. wow, we've come a long way. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. clears throat> From there, and it's it's actually I'm every time I meet creative people, I also know that the downsides to us being creative, the anxiety, the you know, how do you deal with all of that? Oof, that's, that's that's a whole book. To be very sincere, I don't think I deal with it. Whenever it just comes, I'm hope I'm just praying to God that I'm able to go through it. Are you, my anxiety, have you ever been to therapy? No. I think you should. Maybe I should. Everybody honestly. needs a therapist. The shit we go through in this Lagos. I've tried. Well, I've tried one one time. I don't think I'll call it therapy because tell me why the another person I was seeing the same person knew what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's it a if cost Lagos with not having good things? Because I'm not honest, my friend even advised me to use an online person that doesn't know me. Yeah. So I think I would try that. But I need, I feel like I need therapy. I think everybody needs therapy in Lagos. You know, just I remember one time I went somewhere and this so they were talking about this therapist and and you know this was even in the UK, but I think the therapist was Nigerian. And just when they told me, oh, this therapist is really good, like mm-hmm. this is good therapy. But before I left that venue, I'd had like three people's gist, and I thought, huh. uh, is that is that now we are we doing? I what don't is this it. exactly? People actually just don't care. There's no they fear don't. of NDA breaching. Nothing. They just. I think that's why I'm really scared of therapy because I'm like I want to be able to tell someone something and it doesn't go out mm. of what I'm saying. The person. I think for me, I've been lucky enough to yes, online, you know, yeah. people. But I feel like sometimes I needed also a Physical, therapist yeah. that was also here yeah. because a lot of the foreigners sometimes I have to explain a lot of things and break down a lot of cultural True, because they don't understand because yeah. they, they they get it but they don't get it and then I was lucky enough to find someone 
who didn't know who I was. She had no idea. Yeah. She's not on social media. She's not like she's just literally mm -hmm. counseling. You know, school they go to. They have schools that have like you know counseling departments and therapists that help females. And mm -hmm. she had no clue, no social life, nothing. I think it was maybe like six months into seeing her, then maybe her daughter one time came to pick her up, and I was leaving the office, and that's how she found her. She said to me, "Oh my God, I didn't know." That you're on the radio. Oh, like, what time is your radio show? I would listen, you know, but I that worked for me. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. she didn't know who I was and I could totally be myself. You be yourself. I wish I, I could I wish say I had something like that. I'm going to give you her number. Please, please, yeah, please sure. Because I think that we all need to look out for each other, mm -hmm. especially people who work in this creative space because sometimes it can be a lot. You know, you're hmm. dealing with so much. It's a lot. It's a lot for me, especially. How do you handle like friendships in the industry? I have like maybe like two, three. Well, at least you have two, three. Well, I feel like you know one of them, Tammy something like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have a Tays, lot. Tays, my boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of friendship. I mean, when I first started, I was doing. Oh, I was everybody's friend. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I was trying it. to grow, and yeah. I felt like it was very important to just be friendly with everybody. But over time, I knew I couldn't trust nobody. Yeah, I've been. I know. Wow, have you friendship? Let's never go there. I feel that they cry. Well, let's talk about it. <laughs> no, because and it's actually a very emotional topic for me because I I tend to trust people. When I feel comfortable with you, I just let all my all into you. And over times, I'm like, I'm like what's this? Why did I even do this? Mm. I start to regret. And I don't like to regret things. Mm. I like to own up to my decisions. Mm. So I start to regret. I feel so terrible about it. Mm. And do you find that heartbreak from friendship is worse than heartbreak from... Definitely. Me too. Definitely. Me I, too. I see it everywhere on Twitter. I tweet it every day that I'm more... Friendship heartbreaks are the worst. Like how... Even when you even move. Like my friend recently moved to another country. I'm like... Do you realize that I don't have any person to come to the house again? <laughs> what yeah. am I supposed to do now that yeah. you're in Canada? I just yeah. felt so terrible because... Yeah. I fell out with my friend of 24, 25 years. Wait, I mean, it felt like a divorce. I was a in time. therapy for that breakup. 24 years. 25 years I of friendship. No, I feel no come up for like five days. I, <laughs> I was in therapy. I was in therapy for that. Like, hmm. it, I, it felt like I was going through another divorce. I think it probably even hurt more. And my first, it probably did. So I, I learned that friendship, heartbreaks from friendships are like, because you know, they're your, when people say soulmates, they always think it has to be sexual sometimes. Yeah. But over, over time in my life, I found out that my soulmates are people who, my non be people that I have sexual relationships mm -hmm. with, but people who come into my life and we just gel. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we just click up in a way that, that you have that thing, that sort of relationship. Yeah. So that, that for me, was I think in the last couple of years God has been weeping me. I've been through a lot too in this thing called friendship. And I understand what you mean by sometimes you just trying to be there for people and they let you down. And yes. I was saying to Timmy Sandy the other day, I think what works for me now is understanding. See, some people are lucky from when they are born, they meet a bunch of friends. And they are there with them. And they carry on friends and they are good. But to me, I quickly realized long enough that it's not for me. It's not for you. And once you do, don't cry over spilled milk. <laughs> Focus on your family. Um, uh, I'm done with trying friendships. I feel like if it comes, it comes. I'm, I'm okay with the ones I have now. Industry friendships, though, I think I'm, I don't think I'm, I would ever see myself in a deep industry friendship where I'm telling anybody anything anymore. Mm. I learned my lessons the hard way. Well, they would spill things, you say? They would spill things and they would not have my back in rooms where, and it's just like, because some, somebody else comes to me and told me the gist and I'm like, why, why, why was that person there? And then you didn't tell me, and I'm sure that you didn't say nothing when you Oh, do you there. know, doesn't it annoy you when someone comes to tell you? Like now, this is one of the things that I hate. <laughs> when you don't tell me something, and then something happens, and then I'm not telling you, and I say, eh, boy, I hate. I'm but, like, you are the one that should have told me. Why did you feel comfortable talking about me to you? Yes, because the way I am, awful. if I'm mm. friends with someone, you can't come, you, you can't, can't tell me nothing. No, you can't, you can't. That's a, I don't hear just about my friends. I'm always the last to hear. I always speak friend battles. And I think people say it's not a good thing. When I do it. So if I'm if, I, if I'm friends with you now and then someone else is saying something about you or someone got you angry, that person's already my enemy because I feel like this is my friend. And May I stop doing that one? I'm sorry, no, I still do it. I used to be that person. I own who, it with my full chest. They've not shown you enough. When they show <laughs> you, you will stop. I stopped borrowing people's fights. I don't I don't inherit enemies anymore. Because I feel like sometimes in our life, we miss out on potential relationships because of mm. hearsay. And because somebody was a bad person to X, does not mean, mean listen, even the you. prisoner on death row has a family member that loves him. True. As they're about to inject that person in that chamber, there are people that are crying. And he's a criminal. He's a criminal. We are 
all flawed and we're all capable of doing bad things. bad things. And it took growing up for me to almost understand that those things you think you're better than, life has a way of testing you testing with them. You. So you mm. sit back and you look down. I have people that tell me that all their lives, they were like, I would never date a married man. I would never date a married I used to have friends that were that vocal. And now life humbled them <laughs> in ways that I'm like, yo, What's going on? Some of them be like, hey, well, we fell in love before I found out he was married. Or he's kind of going through it. It was kind of. What does kind of mean? What does kind of he's mean? He's a married man. He's a married man. Life will test you with those things. You're... So I'm a bit humble enough to know that, listen, even mm. every good person, look at all the people we idolize in the Bible. Look at all the great men we, we read about. Abraham fucked his housemaid and had a baby by her. If that happened today, ha, huh, that guy is randy. She, he slept with his house. Yeah, he's Randy, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Look at the woman, Rahab. True. Um, she was a prostitute. Well, well, when I say I'm picking you about, I don't mean I would hate the person, but I would always side with my friend. So, like, I think I you don't should hate always you. hear your friend out, mm -hmm. but just stay out of it. I tell people my faith journey. I, I mean, there are people that are probably closer to God who speak to him and they hear him every mm -hmm. day. I go through moments where we don't talk sometimes because I'm mad and I'm like, God, you can handle it. You yes. created the heavens and the earth. So my five minutes of madness, you can deal with you, it. You, you why did you it. make me <laughs> exactly. go through this? Because you go through some things and you don't know why you went through it. You're like, why did this why fucking me? happen? Why, why me? me? Why did you choose me? I said, I'm, I'm not, not your, your strong soldier. soldier. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I'm not interested. But I'm happy for where I am now. I'm getting to Do you know it's so bad better. that that song, Refiner, I want to be tried. Hmm. But I stopped singing it too. Because I realized that when you're singing it, you're asking yourself, you're asking to, go yourself to go through something. So I skipped that part. Ah, I say, don't purify me, Lord. I'm okay. No, but I think if you, I'm understand, okay. you understand that this, because uh, I think things happen for a reason. So when I start understanding that. Not all the time. Hmm. That's well, another level of. has been an example of listen, things happen for a reason. Another level of maturity and walk with God was when I realized that sometimes there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow <laughs> telling you that this is why this happened. This sometimes this it didn't happen. happen for you. Sometimes it's happened for someone that's coming after you in generations mm. that would benefit. There are things that you look at people in the Bible that went through. Look at Noah, for instance. I particularly like talking about the book of Noah. People don't know that I'm this. Bible scholar, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> Well, I know. I, yeah. I mean, you, you, you quote a lot of Bible verses. And, so so the know. story of Noah humbles me so much because I feel like you know, this is someone that was on his own, minding his business. And then God, you came to tell him that you're going to destroy the earth Literally. and you should go and start building. So imagine the way we're now, lucky roundabout, somebody will wake up one day and start building at the roundabout. And when you're passing by, you'll be looking at the person every day and the person is saying, repent, or God is going to wipe away. You will throw things at him and you be like, will, you did, yeah. Chris. Lagos State government will probably carry that person <laughs> from there. Because it's yeah. not, that's almost mm -hmm. insanity, right? And Noah did that for years. To build that ark was years. His family was probably scorned. His children were mocked in school. You are the child of that madman that is building yeah, something. Building hmm. And then eventually the rains came and God couldn't even spare the people to say Noah was right. They all died. They all died. He became a drunk in the later part of his life. He couldn't handle it. What the psychological pressure from being who Noah was. You just that you know when you say you prepare a table before me, you want your enemies to see that. After it wasn't lying. He wasn't lying yeah. Finally, the rain came. I got saved by bitches. You know, God picked but nobody. No, nobody. nobody. To <laughs> no, you go explain no, tire. No evidence. <laughs> <laughs> no evidence. Or no evidence. Well, I'm a, I, I see. I see. I see from that point of view. I do. I do Why did he have to go through that? I see from that point of view, but just because of the things that have happened in my life in recent times, I'm like. Oh, yeah. I agree with you. There's some things that obviously when they happen, you're like, thank God that didn't work because God had a better mm -hmm. plan. But I feel that's also us being baby Christians. You need to get to a point in your life where, where I just got there. And it took me saying, and I'm sharing this with the whole world, it took me saying this prayer. I'd gone for deliverance. I went for deliverance. Like my makeup artist just said to me one time, Ma, have you ever tried it? You know, I just think you should. And I, I said, okay, no problem, I'll go. So I went Three days, took out three days of my life, took out my hair, everything, went to Prayer City, took out a, a chalet, my drive. Everybody came with me and we all went. And you know how you think that after the deliverance, things you start, start working. Working. as I'm coming out, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. and it wasn't like that. And then I went through another valley experience and I just got to a point where I said to myself, and I said this to God in bed, you know what, this is what we're going to do going forward, Lord. Because I know you must be tired of me having faith today and dropping faith drop tomorrow. tomorrow. So let's help ourselves. If you don't desire something from me, 
completely take away the desire from my heart. If it's not going to happen for me, don't let me desire it. Mm. Because you see, the Bible says, teach us to number our days so that we can apply wisdom, right? True. I don't know how long I'm on this side of eternity for. We all hope and pray that we live relief, till we're yeah. old. But I don't want to be the girl who gets to heaven and they play my tape and I'm worried about God. I kept praying. My prayer points only had this, 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 this. No. So take it away from me so that I can love you regardless. regardless. I want to love you if That's you do it or you don't. Points. And he did. And my life is sweet now. These days, I don't stress about anything. I'm like, Lord, if it's not for me, take away that take desire. So mm -hmm. I don't even want it. Make me so busy loving Jesus, loving that, my yeah. work, loving my life that I don't think I missed out on anything because I want to go to the grave empty. I want to be the girl that people will watch after I'm long gone and be like, she lived and not was pressured by mm -hmm. people thinking she didn't have a kid at this age. She didn't get married at this time. If you're not going to give it to me, then don't worry. Take it so take that it. I don't even desire it. Mm. Let me just be okay. Do you know what I mean? That's and it's I working that. well. So maybe you should try that. That's, a, that's actually very, very good. That's a good prayer point. I should put Chocho. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> thank you for coming for my sermon, guys. If I open a church, <clears throat> Who knows? Who we'll come? Who knows? Who we'll come? We'll no, come. but then it's 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 one of the things that one of the hardest lessons I learned this year, and since I did that, life's gotten better. So Not instead of you. feeling like God failed me, me in this department, I don't even want to desire it. I just want to spend my days being so obsessed with other things. And and if it comes, and it if comes. it comes, it comes. And if it doesn't come, I'm never gonna. And it's literally me saying to God, I'm never gonna ask you ask for this you again. This again. I'm just going to just live my life. And if you don't want it for me, then we move. Because the Bible says the desires of our hearts are put there by you. So if you don't desire it for me, then why am I now? Well, yeah. Because also it becomes uh, an idol. All you're thinking about is this one, this one thing. thing. And then you feel like even when God is good in other areas of your life, look at what you're saying. Like, you know, God has disappointed you, but you've been through some things. You focus on those things. And, and you don't look at, at the, the good part. Yeah, true. Yeah. Well, we're all on this spiritual journey together. Hopefully, <laughs> I get to the point where you are now. Amen, amen. Ah, uh, wait, oh, uh, please don't use me as inspiration, no. No, just because like, tomorrow, no, like, God, I'll be like, yeah. No, yeah. no, no, actually, don't I, use I'm, I'm me actually as... this year, or like I said, the past three months, I've actually gotten to know God better, and I think mm. my life is getting to the mm. point where. Just look at it as I a friendship. That's what's helped me. I keep telling myself, when you have a friend, you apply yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You guys get closer with time. How close I was to God last year, I'm closer to him more now. More now. You know, and I'm, I'm not in any rush. I don't care. People say all sorts about me. Just doing this. I'm the first to tell them that, uh, don't look at me. Because as you're judging me, I will enter heaven. <laughs> You'll be there. <laughs> doing shall I you. Mm. Do you understand? Like, and God, we understand ourselves. Do you get? As you should. Do. We get ourselves. Our relationship is ours, not, it's not for you to know. Yeah. So yeah, take your time and then just, and because what's the point in us being so, and I think churches and religion also has done that to us. It's almost like a servant master like relationship when it shouldn't be. True. I want to enjoy him. I want to be like, God, I'm driving home today yeah. and I'm just talking to you and saying, Lord, this happened at three o'clock. That was fucking hilarious. Why did this happen did to this me? Happen? And we just chill and we yeah, I think laugh. I talked to, talk to him this way these days. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then he, there was something I was thinking about before your interview. I just thought about it and said, oh Lord, it'd be nice to get this email. And I went to change and the email had come. Literally. Aww. It did. So I was God, like, please, let him send my email to <laughs> 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 on that note guys and this was beautiful it was it was everything so I fun. thought it would be you know what I think this is even more like a therapy session for me because I don't I feel I feel like I let some things off my chest and I like that yeah, thank you for I coming think, yeah, on my thank couch. you for having me we're supposed to have done this last season but yes, you were, so. <laughs> we were just Missing each other. We're missing each other. But then, no. at the beginning of this season, I said, you know what? I'm going to... I want you to say it now to them. They're going to do the skit with Madame Gold. I did... Oh, shit. You didn't S say Madame Gold. Anybody. Boy, you're going to do the skit. Say it now so that I'm it on camera. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to do the skit with Steve Chi. Yes. So, yes. I have that on camera. Just yes. sign up for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, people of the Lord, thank you for watching us on Token Moments. Till next time, my name is Steve Chooks and that is Token Makinwa. See you.